This video is brought to you by Morning Brew. Am I supposed to open it? Well, do you want to do the sexy unboxing or do you want me to? Sure. <laughs> is that why you put it there? Yeah, that is the Lawa 33mm 0.95 Aperture Argus lens, brand new from Lawa slash Venus Optics. The box is very nice. Lawa asked if we'd be interested in trying out this tasty looking lens and with Fuji letting us down a while back, not releasing that 50 millimeter equivalent fast aperture prime that they teased at, this lens really excited us, even if it is only a manual focus lens. We also have the XE4 on loan to us from B&H to try out. In this video, we'll be taking this lens on an adventure, but if you just wanna get our final thoughts on that, feel free to use the chapter markers below. It just so happened that we got this lens right before our trip to Vegas. But if you speculated that we are not really Vegas people, you would be right. While it was great to get out and see that there are other humans in this world and wonderful to see people living life again, our overnighter to Vegas was really only for two purposes. No, the Leica store was not one of those purposes, though it is fun to dream. The first was to pick up my new mountain bike. And second, of course, was photography, but not in Vegas but we'll get back to that in a moment. Hey, Andrew, are you ready to go? I have not yet had my morning brew. I start my mornings with morning brew. If you're anything like me, there's only so much of the news that you can handle. Long ago, I turned off my news feeds to avoid the cycle of doom scrolling. Instead, morning brew sends me an email with witty, well-written articles full of relevant business, finance, and technology-focused news that I can digest and be done with in five minutes. Morning Brew is my way of keeping up with what's important to me in the news in a bite-sized way, and since it's something I use, I don't mind recommending it to you as well. So if business finance news that goes down easy is your thing, there's really no reason to not take 15 seconds to subscribe for free. You'll find a link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today. Vegas. We are in Alamo, not that Alamo, Alamo, Nevada, and this place is tiny but beautiful.
And we're back and that was a pretty quick trip, but it felt so good. It's been probably a year since Danae and I were able to get out together and leave our children with somebody else. So that felt really nice. Um, and the photography was very enjoyable. And this was a very enjoyable setup. We love the XC4. This video is not about the XC4. We will probably talk about it some time in the future. Spoiler, I love it. It's a great, it's a great camera. But this lens is also wonderful. We had a great time with it. Um, for me personally, I do a lot of manual focus anyway, so I didn't really miss not having autofocus. Slightly different story for, for Danae. She doesn't enjoy the manual focus as well. And I would say that if you're not sure if you would like manual focus, like if you're someone who wants a lens of this focal length with that fast aperture, I know a lot of you are tempted by that and willing to sacrifice um, manual focus for it. Do yourself a favor before you spend this much money on a lens and try some old vintage lenses and um, and use those to see if you're going to like it because it is a different, it's a whole different experience. You lose a lot of functionality, obviously, out of your native Fuji um, bodies as a result. So make sure that it's for you first. Um, but if it is and you need either, you know, uh, access to lower light or that shallow depth of field, man, this is a great lens. So let's talk about some of the notes that I took as we went on what I do like and maybe some of the things that I don't like about this Argus uh, CF 33 millimeter 0.95 APO lens. I'm not going to get into all the specs that make up this lens because those are easy to access online, what all those acronyms mean and whatnot, but I will tell you what my experience was. And um, first off, we'll talk about the quality of build, the way that it feels in the hand, the way that it looks. Um, maybe we can start there. I love the way that it looks. As you guys know, I love my 16 millimeter 1.4. Oh, here it is. With the square lens hood. Um, I really enjoy that. Uh, that beefy protection that it gives and and I just like the way it looks and and it was really pleasant to take this out of the box and see that it was kind of modeled after the same I mean they look very similar um, and I like that it it uh, it came on it so I wasn't sure if it was removable but is it is and it's the tolerances are nice and tight fits on there well um, and then the lens itself good quality metal um, for the most part, there's probably some plastic elements in there, but it feels pretty hefty, feels good. It feels high quality, doesn't feel cheap at all. Um, you will notice that the focus throw, which you're going to be using a lot, obviously, it's long. It's, it's a long focus throw. This isn't a, a quick focus. And you'll notice that the shots that we took, we were going from infinity focus to close focus a lot um, because we, we go for both styles of shots we're kind of i guess the extremes right where we're we're back pretty far getting architectural shots and then we're really close getting those shallow depth of field really up close near macro shots and it's uh and the lens is good for both of those i i enjoyed the image quality i got out of both but it, it was kind of a pain i'll be honest to kind of sit here <laughs> um, moving that focus throw and it's and it's not the easiest focus throw it's it's a little on the stiffer side at least this copy different copies can have different uh, dampening um, but anyway so that that was one negative I guess was that you had to move uh, this a lot and so keep that in mind if you're someone that needs to, to move focus quite a bit that that can kind of be an irritation um, the other thing that bo bothers me just a little bit is that if you look straight on this, this, and I don't know if you can tell on the screen or not, um, but it's not quite level. <laughs> it doesn't go on quite level, that lens hood and everything. Everything doesn't line up perfectly with the lens body. It's a little off kilter. That bothers me a little bit. I'd rather everything to fit nicely. Um, yeah, that, you know. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It does have a clickless aperture, which most photographers will not appreciate. I don't appreciate that. I, I would prefer, I strongly prefer that there be detents. Some videographers will prefer that to not be there, but even as a, a videographer myself, it's not often that I'm changing aperture mid shot. It's very rare, in fact, that I want that smoothed aperture. And so for me, it's, it's just not, it's not a big help. It's not a, it's not a selling point. It's actually a, a negative. So I wish that it had, 
uh, detents. Um, and it only goes to F11. It doesn't go to an F16 or an F22, which is also could potentially be a negative, uh, especially if you, like, like us, tend to shoot a lot of more architectural or far away things. Um, F11 is usually fine, um, but with uh, being able to access faster shutter speeds uh, or not being able to, like with this, you know, one four thousandth of a second in really bright situation, it could be nice to go to F16 to be able to get um, without having to have a, 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 a filter, right? A neutral, neutral density filter. Anyway, F11 isn't quite as as slow as I would would want, but it didn't it didn't affect us in this shoot. In this shoot, we we did okay um, for whatever reason without needing to go to F16. So what else? The the bokeh was nice, I thought. Um, maybe not the creamiest bokeh in the world that I've ever seen, but I personally couldn't care less about what's out of focus. It's what's in focus that matters a lot. And it is soft, uh, wide open. Um, the subjects or the place that is in focus tends to be slightly soft. I would fully expect that with a lens like this though. That is not a surprise at all and well within reason. Um, nothing crazy here. I would call this on the good side of image quality, especially when you look at how well chromatic aberration is controlled without Fuji doing any manipulation, which they can and do do with some of their other lenses. No need here. This controls chromatic aberration well. There's, you're still gonna see a little bit, but it's, it's very well controlled. And um, I'd say the only image quality ish issue, I guess I saw was that it was, uh, there was no vignetting that I could see, or if, if there was, it was probably very minor. Um, what I did notice though, was some distortion, which with this focal length, it surprised me a little bit. Um, and I did find that I wanted to correct that with some of the architectural, the rural architectural um, photos that I took. Uh, I tended to want to just tweak the distortion in post a little bit. Normally don't have to do that with Fuji, whether that be because the Fuji lenses handle it better, or probably more often is the case that Fuji takes care of that for you. It actually corrects distortion for its lenses. So it's not that Fuji lenses are all necessarily better than the Lawa. Um, is at that it's just that Fuji takes care of that. So that's just a minor thing I prefer not to have to adjust that but it, again, it's not the end of the world and for the cost savings for a lens like this I mean, this is a pretty affordable lens for how fast it is of an aperture um, It's fine and it's probably worth the sacrifice for, for for most of you Although most of you are probably not getting a lens like this to shoot architecture. Let's be honest. So maybe that's maybe that's a, a not even worth mentioning <laughs> Um, and in fact, probably a lot of the reason for this lens is lost on us. We didn't shoot in low light and we don't tend to very often, not for photography. Uh, I used to more with events, but I just haven't been doing events. Um, and even if I did do events, I still, I want that autofocus. Um, I would prefer that, especially with how slow this, because this will slow you down in an event situation. Keep that in mind. If you're trying to move focus quickly, it's between manual focus and how difficult it is to focus throw that will slow you down. I would not rely on this in an event situation myself personally, or even a portrait situation because I don't like manual focus for portraiture. But what I, I really love about this lens is the combination of the shallow depth of field and the close focus. And, and really what I want to try this lens for, what I'm really excited to use it for, which I haven't had a chance yet, is video. I want to try this lens in my workshop doing um, bike restoration, my other channel. Some of you know that I do. I like to get up close on those details and that shallow depth of field can be really nice to isolate exactly what I'm working on. So I'm excited to use that in that setting, that close focus, that low light so I can use it in my garage. All of that makes this probably an ideal lens for that situation um, and that really nice control over where the focus is. All of that is, is good. And add to that, this has very little to no uh, focus breathing as, um, as many lenses will struggle with. In fact, most Fuji lenses do struggle with that, which is why I don't love using them for, for video. So this really could be a videographer's dream lens if, if that's the focal length you're after. So lots of things to like about this lens, lots of reasons to justify the price range. It's definitely a lens that I would put on the recommendation side and a lens that we'll definitely use again in the future. If you're interested in the video side or how this does as a video lens, like I said, I will be using it for that. Let me know if I get enough people interested, maybe I will do a follow-up video specific for video. 
Either way, follow the other channel if you wanna see examples of it in action. I'm gonna start using this as my primary lens for my restoration work. So you'll start to see videos come out with that. Um, and I don't suspect I'll not use it unless it just doesn't work out very well for whatever reason. So that's, I think that covers my thoughts. Would I recommend it? Absolutely, if you don't mind slowing down a little bit and if you really want low light or that shallow depth of field with really good image quality, um, if you're doing video and you need those things, maybe it's not the right one if you're doing portraiture and you need to be fast at focusing or event work, might not be right for those situations, but for a lot of other situations, more artistic situations, this could really be an incredible lens at an incredible value. So I definitely put it on the recommendation side. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, whether it be some entertainment at the beginning or some education at the end, there was something here for you. Uh, either way, really encourage you guys to go out and do some good with your cameras, and we will talk to you again real soon.